the assistant's going to make the first incision. In any autopsy, the classical way of beginning it is by making a Y-shaped incision, starting on the chest and then extending downwards to the uh, pubic area. This allows full exposure of the various body cavities while still maintaining a um, procedure which allows for um, an open casket funeral if that's what the family desires. What he's cutting through is subcutaneous fat and muscle. The first flap that he's reflecting um, will, is being done so that you can expose the neck organs, which also will be dissected out and examined as part of the autopsy. The individual that is being examined in this case, um, we suspect that the cause of death is a drug intoxication um, with amitriptyline, which is an uh, antidepressant medication. Um, but in order to prove that, we need... Huh. What they're noticing is that um, this individual has had a uh, breast implant, uh, has had breast implants uh, placed. They hadn't noticed the scarring um, earlier, so it's a little bit of a surprise. And that's a silicone implant. Okay, what he's doing now is reflecting back, cutting the dia where the diaphragm or the breathing muscle attaches to the side of the body and exposing the peritoneal cavity or the abdominal cavity. The doctor's examining the loops of bowel, trying to find the appendix, and uh, she's found it, and so she'll remove that. Um, we keep that as uh, basically as a way of helping us identify people. If they have their appendix in place, it's an identifying feature. Now the ribs are uh, being cut so that the chest cavity can be exposed. He's, now he's also cutting the next portion of the diaphragm and reflecting back the chest plate in order to expose the heart and lungs. And now you see the heart and lungs in place. What he's doing now is cutting the uh, pulmonary artery and checking to make sure there are no blood clots in there. Um, a pulmonary embolus, which is when somebody throws a clot to the lung, is when a large clot form is formed somewhere else in the body and then travels to the lung. What he pulled out was not a uh, clot that formed while the person was alive. That was a post-mortem blood clot. Now the heart has been removed. The next step will be to remove the lungs. He's taking the right lung out first. He's, hmm, he's cut the um, bronchus, the main airway to the lung, and notice that there was some mucoid uh, material in that bronchus. He's now uh, removing the pericardial sac and reflecting the diaphragm in order to free up the liver for uh, removal. pardon me, spleen is coming out now. That sits in the uh, left upper quadrant of the abdomen. That's about a normal shape and size. What he's doing now is he's putting a clamp on the proximal end of the small uh, intestine, the duodenum, and then he'll free up all of the intestine so that it can be uh, removed in a uh, block. And there we go.
That's an adrenal gland, which he's um, dissected off the top of one of the kidneys. Is that the left? Dave? Right. Right, yeah. okay. Right. Now he's incising the uh, renal capsule, which is a thin membrane that surrounds... Here, Dave, right there. Okay. That surrounds the uh, kidneys, and he'll strip that back to expose the kidney itself, and then remove the kidney. He's going to free up all of the tissues um, through to the base of the tongue um, and then dissect down along either side so that the neck organs can be removed along with the tongue. Now that he's down in the uh, upper chest, he can transect them because that leaves enough room for them to infuse um, embalming fluid through those vessels down low. Okay, he's now reflecting the uh, scalp. The front has been done. Now he'll reflect the posterior portion. Now that the, uh, all of the incisions have been made, he'll um, use the key in order to uh, free it up and peel it off from the dura. And as you can see, now the brain has been exposed. First thing he'll do is reach down in and cut the optic nerves. Um, they're the first thing that will hold, are holding the brain in place. Once those have been cut, he'll cut some of the other cranial nerves, and then he'll need to make an incision through the tentorium, which is a tough membrane that holds the cerebellum in the posterior fossa of the skull. Once that's done, he can put his knife down into the frame and make them and transect the spinal column and essentially deliver the brain. The uh, skull on the inside is lined by a tough membrane, the dura mater. Um, in order for us to be able to visualize if there's any fractures, that uh, membrane needs to be peeled away from the underlying bone. So that's what the uh, assistant is doing. Now. Dr. Fricky is now examining the heart. The first thing she'll be doing is looking at the coronary arteries to make sure that they're intact and that there's no signs of thrombosis or atherosclerosis. The artery she's dissecting right now is called the left anterior descending artery. This is the uh, vessel that supplies the anterior portion of the left side of the heart or the main ch pumping chamber of the heart. Representative samples of the various tissues that are examined will be saved in formaldehyde, and so that's what you're seeing her do right now. The outflow tract to the pulmonary artery is normal, and the three leaflets of the pulmonary valve are intact and normal. This is the aorta. She's opened the aortic valve, and you can see the two coronary ostea where the coronary arteries come off from the aorta, just above the uh, valve cusps. This is the right lung. Yeah, this is the right lung. You can tell that it's the right lung because it has three lobes, one, two, and three. Um, the left lung normally will have two. Sometimes you can find um, multiple lobes in both lungs. Sometimes up to five separate lobes may be seen. Dr. Fricky is now opening the main bronchus of the right lung and following it out through its uh, primary and secondary divisions. Again, the purpose of this is to see if there's any evidence of disease or other abnormalities, such as obstruction by foreign bodies. She's examining the liver. 